I think the government has tough decisions ahead and with the budget just four weeks away, ministers are looking at ways in which they can curb spending in their own departments. One of the departments under the most scrutiny is the Department of Education. Reports this weekend suggesting a lot of unthinkable things like an increase in class sizes and a significant reduction in the number of teachers in the classrooms. Sean Flynn, Education Editor with the Irish Times, joins us on the line. Good afternoon, Sean. Good afternoon to you, Jonathan. Um, I'll tell you the one thing I am happy about is that the sod was turned on my son's new school about three months ago, which means it should be ready for next year because if they were waiting that extra 12 months, that school and many more like it around the country probably wouldn't be getting the green light. No, indeed, um, because uh, I mean I don't think there's going to be too many JCBs going into school schoolyards uh, and uh, there won't, won't be much but many sods being turned in uh, over the coming months and years, Jonathan, because Rory Quinn is under ferocious pressure to achieve savings. I mean, just to, to give you a bit of context here, he's working with an overall cake, as it were, of an education of about nine billion, which seems like a lot, but about close to 80 percent of that is absorbed by teacher pay and pensions for everyone in the education sector. And of course, that's all ring fenced. He can't go near that because of the Croke Park agreement. So he's basically got only about 20 percent of that to fund you you know, services in our entire education system. And he's been saying, as you know, at various conferences that Ireland is in receivership, that he's going to deliver real and substantial savings for his friend and colleague, as he describes him, Brendan Howland, and for the Minister for Finance. Uh, but he's also been saying, you know, that he's going to do his best to protect frontline services. But it seems to me you just simply cannot square the circle. There's so much pressure on him to achieve savings. And it's almost inevitable, I think, that we're going to see an increase in class size. We had that report over the weekend of 2,000 teachers that were going to be cut. Now, are they allowing for the retirements in that? Because, you know, a lot of civil servants have been mulling over whether or not they want to take up um, the redundancy deal that's on the table. Does that 2,000 figure limited to that? Well, I mean, just to, just, just to explain this, I mean, there's no question there were some headlines over the weekend that 2,000 teachers and what have you are going to lose their jobs uh, or, or be made redundant or be sacked or whatever. Nothing like that is going to happen. Nothing like that can happen again because of Croke Park, because that says that there can't be any redundancies, at least until 2014. So what's going to happen basically is that I would say it's perhaps a 1,000, perhaps 1,500 teaching posts will be left unfilled, Jonathan, at both primary and secondary level. Basically what he's going to do is increase class size probably from from you know, it's now 1 to 27 in primary schools. It's going to be 1 to 28. And then in secondary, secondary schools, it's now 1, 1 to 19. It's going to increase to 1 to 20. Basically, if you put less teachers in the system, it's going to mean that teaching posts are unfilled. And it's going to mean that parents and kids are going to face, you know, much, 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 uh, much increased uh, classes. I mean, it's interesting, we're just looking back at what Rory Quinn was saying when he was in opposition, because there was an attempt to increase class size by the last Fianna Fáil government. And Rory Quinn described the quote as an attack on our children, the most vulnerable people in <laughs> society. So his words are going to come be, you know, are going, going to come back and haunt them, I would have thought, because this, yeah, th- this is very sensitive stuff. I think the USI are already trotting out a lot of Rory Quinn quotes in opposition as part of their campaign. But uh, one to 28 in primary school, 1 to 20 in secondary school. I mean, there are increases of one extra pupil per class. On the face of it, it doesn't sound like a huge burden to put uh, on the teacher in the classroom. Well, it doesn't, except for the fact that we've already got one of the largest class sizes in Europe. And in fact, there's very few uh, countries, particularly at primary level, there's very few countries which have class sizes, Irish-style class sizes. I mean, for example, we have over 100,000 pupils, if you can believe that, still in classes of 30 or more. I mean, I think one of the issues will be, and Rory Quinn will try to make this argument, that the key, and I suppose parents know this in fairness, the key in terms of your child's performance in school is actually the teacher. That's the key. I mean, there's a lot of conflicting evidence, you know, about class size and whether smaller classes actually means better results in better teaching. I mean, the key for every for every parent, and I suppose for every principal, is the quality of the teacher. So you'll hear Rory Quinn, I think, you know, making this argument and saying, OK, regrettably, I have to do this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But at the same time, I mean, on my own sense of it, and in terms of my kids, you want, you want your child to get the best possible attention. That's the most natural instinct of any parent. And certainly, it's very difficult. I know any, as a parent, it's very difficult to control two, three or four kids. I mean, the whole idea of, having, hmm. of teachers having to deal and having to cope with larger classes, I think, will make a lot of people worried. Look, we're talking about mainstream classes here. I mean, we had a lot of debate just a couple of months ago about special needs and then the 400 extra special needs assistants that were allocated, uh, that were held back for some reason until October. 
Is that an area where the minister would make a, a, another cut at this point, given the amount of criticism that was there? Or is, like, you know, he's going to have to make a difficult decision somewhere. Yes, and I, I mean, he's going to face up or over increased last night because the teacher unions, particularly the INTO, are very vociferous and very powerful and very influential. I personally think he can actually probably just right, just about ride out that storm. I'm not so clear, Jonathan, that he can do it on special needs. There is no more sensitive... That, the two most sensitive words, politically sensitive words in all of education, maybe apart from third level fees, are special needs. It's massively sensitive. Um, I think every parent in the country who has a special needs parent, uh, special needs child, and everyone who doesn't, I mean, I think there's a natural sort of Irish sense of let's protect the weakest, and the special needs kids are the most vulnerable out there. Now there's a sort of a, you know, uh, the bean counters are out and they're looking at the number, the cost of special needs assistance, and they're saying perhaps sh- something should be done. But my sense is that any move by, by Rory Quinn, any move to in any way compromise special needs or to cut into special needs provision, that's the most sensitive political issue. That's a real time bomb. And that's the one that would give, more, give him more trouble politically, I think, than the increase in class size. <laughs> Sean, you mentioned the unions there a minute ago. We were talking to the TUI the other day when the junior search syllabus was uh, being amended and the proposals were being brought forward for a pretty radical change within the next couple of years. Now, they didn't make too many ominous sounds about it, but the one thing they did say was that how is this going to be resourced? Where are they going to find the money for this? So something like that that is an ambitious plan, it's hardly going to be cost neutral. So why are we embarking on that? Well, Well, I think he's hoping that it will be cost neutral. But I think something, you have to go back to the fundamental of Irish education. The fundamental problem that we face in Irish education, Jonathan, is that our standards have been dropping. And we had an OECD report last year, which was really dramatic, and showed us that, for example, in terms of literacy, our decline, we declined from a ranking of five to a ranking of 19 in terms of our literacy levels in post-primary schools. That's the sharpest decline, if you can believe that, amongst any developed nations. Now, that's the real issue that we have. We've got massive problems in terms of literacy. We have massive problems in terms of numeracy. We've got all this stuff about building a knowledge economy. And yet, you know, we've got 50% of maths teachers who aren't fully qualified. We're falling down the, the international rankings when it comes to our standards in maths. So to be fair to Quinn, he's trying to deal with this whole quality issue. And I think yeah, but if, right, if, if the right. unions are going to stick their head above the parapet on that and say, look, this has, there's no, we're not doing this unless it's revenue neutral. We're not going to effectively play ball if it means further cuts. That just means that if they're talking about class sizes, he's going to have a serious fight on his hands with unions that are, let's face it, pretty militant as it is. Yeah, I think in terms of quality, he's on the side of the angels here and he's trying to do the right thing. But whether he can do the right thing and look for cooperation from the teacher unions at the same time when he's, when, when he's hammering them in terms of class size and all of that. That's, that's, where, that's, where, that's where the game is going to be. And it's going to be very interesting indeed if there's, if there's severe cuts in class size, if, for example, he cuts into special needs, if there are other cuts we don't know about in the budget. How are the unions going to approach that? How are the, the, the teacher unions going to respond to that? Are they going to you know, put a stop to some of this reform agenda? Because the junior search, remember, the reform of the junior search, that's only the very first a stage of this process which is going to involve reform of the Leaving Cert as well, which is going to involve reform of the way perhaps things are taught and what's taught, huge fundamental changes at both primary and second level. So Rory Quinn is pushing this very radical agenda, but he is dependent, isn't he, on the cooperation and the goodwill of of the teachers. And if he does anything in the budget which undermines that, it's going to be very difficult for him, I think. Just before I let you go, Sean, one of the stories was in the newspapers this morning, the school transport scheme. Um, likelihood that there's going to be a doubling in the cost of that, that's going to hit parents hard as well, isn't it? It is, and again, this is one something that's very sensitive, but it's been on the agenda, you know, for quite a while now. The, the board snipped the Colin McCarthy report, had a very sceptical look at it, and said this whole idea of people being ferried, you know, by public transport to, 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 to schools, to very small schools in far-flung areas, that it doesn't make any economic sense. It, it, on, in an, of course, it doesn't make any economic sense, but particularly for for backbenchers and Fianna Gael and Labour who are <laughs> going to come under ferocious pressure, it makes a lot of political sense, you know. So I would imagine, again, this is somewhere where I think we're going to see cuts, particularly in school transport at second level. And again, we can expect a ferocious backlash uh, 
from, to, to Rory Quinn and to the measures that he's planned. Yeah, making it sound like the man's going to be in a bunker when he actually announces his budget press conference afterwards. It's certainly, it's certainly going to be difficult for him because I think he's actually had a very good run in terms of education and I think people have welcomed this very much a sense that he's a new broom, very much a sense that he's put his hands up and said, you know, he hasn't been a cheerleader for, for the whole education service. He said, look, we've got serious problems here and I want to reform and change things. The problem is, it's very hard to push reform in sort of an age of austerity, which is what we have now. OK, uh, Sean Flynn, Education Editor with the Irish Times. Thanks for talking us through that, Thank Sean. You,